if you've been not under a rock for the past, well, you know, since Friday, basically, you will know that there's quite a bit of economic turbulence going on. So uh, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed on Friday. Today's Signature Bank collapsed. Today's Monday. I think it collapsed today, right? And uh, we're at a stage where even if, regardless of how you view things, if you really think that we're uh, headed towards a severe recession or a mild one, a short one, or a long one, I think a lot of people have a very strong feeling that it's more likely than not uh, that we're going into a recession or that we've been in one for a bit now. So uh, this is not a channel about economics. What we are about here, though, is about tech. And how we think that tech is going to be influenced with everything that's been happening on the markets. Now, what this video aims to do is aims, uh, it aims to discuss how we expect tech companies, well, how I expect tech companies to behave in the next, say, two years or so in regards to three fields of technology. Those three fields are AI quantum computing, and health tech. And uh, I want to go a bit into how I think they should allocate their resources going forward for, say, the next two years or whatnot, or a year and a half, or however long the recession is going to be. I don't know, of course. Uh, and um, where I think they're going to see the biggest potential of... Um, decent economic returns first of all when we look at ai now in times of a recession i think that with uh, given how far ai has come in the past over the past few months at least what's been publicized to us ai has already produced tangible business value and there's there's no debating that at this point so the fact that investing in AI, whether that's going to continue during a recession or not, I think at this stage, investment in AI is still going to continue. And I would say it's going to continue strongly because there's been already business value shown in practice from AI. Say, like the smallest example is customer service being automated to an extent. Uh, that already has had some business impact on the businesses that use the AI systems where they can use people for other things and they don't have to have as many customer service reps. For example, right? This is not like going to be some kind of all-inclusive list or anything, but that's one example that shows you how AI has already had business impact. Something that's already saved businesses money in real life this is not a hypothesis. This is not in the next 20 years. This is now. This is yesterday and now. Something that's already shown that much value. And given that advancement in AI is expected to be or is known to be exponential, continuing to invest strongly and prudently in AI, I think is the way forward even during the recession. Now, here's the catch, though. It has to be done in a balanced way. The reason is you want to automate to an extent where you deliver business value, but you don't want to automate to an extent where a huge like seismic shift happens in terms of employment uh, that affects millions of people's employability like on a really large scale to an extent that you yourself, the company making the AI technology and making the AI advancements, lose customers. Because at the end of the day, like it's a, it's a market economy, we're all basically selling and buying, selling to and buying from each other, right? If there's a ton less people buying products, eventually what goes around comes around. If your AI systems replace so many people, and result in so much unemployment, that means less customers for you. That's going to mean less customers for you. So it's got to be done prudently with a balance. So you implement something that displaces some workers, 
that adds some business value to some companies out there with measure. And then you live its impact in real life and see how much it affects buying and selling, basically, and how much it affects the buying of goods and, and the sales of goods, how much it negatively affects them. I mean, how much it negatively impacts sales of goods and services. If, it's, if the net result is positive, then you can continue going down that path. So even during a recession, I still see companies investing in AI. Now, when it comes to something like quantum computing, quantum computing, the, like the judges are still out. Um, the verdict is not in yet because a lot of people feel that, uh, if you listen to experts talk about the field, some people will talk to you about how this is kind of like a bubble, it's going to burst. It's just good for, you know, for, um, for CEOs to talk about this kind of thing in front of investors and whatnot. Uh, while some people see that it has actual promise. Now, I don't think that there is tangible business value added by the advancements that have been made so far in quantum computing. Not anything, to my knowledge, that's to the extent that would justify spending big money on this in a recession so maybe maybe we'll see focusing on moonshots things like quantum computing that have promise but like significantly farther down the road less let's say five years down the road 10 years down the road six years down the road like i don't think we're gonna see a scenario in which quantum computing is going to add significant business value in the next year or two. There may be something I'm unaware of, but um, if there was a company out there that was close to coming up with an application of quantum computing that was close to becoming of significant business value, we would have heard about it we would have heard about it night and day because they would have been one of the few, if not the first company or companies to achieve that. Now, we haven't heard about that. All we've heard about is Google's claim of quantum supremacy, IBM saying, no, it was me, I'm the one who achieved it first. Uh, and and uh, you can actually find this on YouTube and find uh, how Google explains what quantum supremacy is. Uh, so at this point, I don't think that quantum computing is going to have impact and business value in the next year to year and a half to the extent that would justify prioritizing it in terms of budgeting. It may take a place on the back burner for the next year to two years. When it comes to health tech, I think two things about health tech actually. Health tech is where is like the third topic or the third um, field of technology that I want to talk about um, in terms of tech spending for the next year to two. And it's also the field that I think tech companies should focus most on going forward. Uh, no less than their focus on AI. Health tech, I think, is an ideal kind of field to focus on even during a recession if technology companies say apple for example or google are capable of coming up with an emr system and electronic medications record software the hospitals and health systems in the united states can adopt on a large scale you're looking at something that would be designed way better than a system like epic for example something that would be more usable because they come from companies that are very um, consumer focused and their consumers are consumers who typically have discretionary spending like they buy their devices because they want to not because they need to so if you look at the the current incumbent if you look at something like epic for example epic is a leader in electronic medical record software in in the healthcare industry they're not the only company but they're huge um, they have a extremely poor user experience. They have a super poor user experience, very complex to use, um, very tedious, and all of this wastes time and frustrates clinicians. Uh, frustrated clini clinicians means uh, perhaps worse note-taking, worse documentation, 
uh, wasted time, uh, low morale, um, uh, bad for the patient, bad for the uh, physician's ability to focus on um, healthcare, hence they will possibly be able to see less patients, and for the hospital as a business from the administrative side. That means that their physicians or clinicians of any sort will end up seeing less people, so that means less profit, um, a negative impact to the bottom line. So why am I saying this? Companies like Epic that make AMRs typically are not used to catering to customers in the way that a company like Apple or Google are used to catering to customers. The reason is they're used to health systems depending on them and like they don't sell stuff that consumers just think is nice to have. So they really have to be like woo them and, and really uh, mesmerize them with amazing usability and great user experience and whatnot and great user experience. They don't think that way. They feel like the hospital's buying my software the clinicians have no choice, they're going to use it, so the user experience, who cares, right? They're using it anyway. But yeah, they can make some improvements and whatnot. I'm not saying they wouldn't try that or they're not trying to, but still, their, their, their UX is very poor. So, if you have companies that are used to prioritizing user experience by their consumers, making things like electro electronic medical records, say Apple or Google, you are going to end up with devices, uh, with the software, excuse me, that's going to be adopted uh, possibly largely by health systems that should be easier to use, easier for clinicians to get work done on, to document, to take notes on or document whatever on, to find charts on, access information on, etc. Meaning they can spend less time on it. They can, it would boost morale. It can enable them to see more patients. It can enable them to have a bigger positive impact on patients in the U.S. healthcare market. And also for the administrators in the hospitals, they'd be happy too because the bottom line is improving. You see, all of that can happen when companies who are typically consumer-centric focus on health tech. The beautiful thing about health tech is the economy is good, the economy is bad, people are going to go get their treatment if people uh, can postpone some kinds of treatment, they can't postpone others. Healthcare is a necessity, recession or not. So, I would think, logically, companies like Apple and Google need to focus on health tech, especially a company like Apple, where they already have their AirPods, for example, that can be used, uh, like I discussed in this morning's video, uh, that can be used as a hearing device. If that becomes FDA approved, you can use that to connect to the Apple EMR to provide it with health information about your health, about your, uh, your hearing health, or maybe provide ECG information from your Apple Watch. Um, all kinds of applications. I'm not saying all of these things are foolproof, not saying, everything that, not saying everything's FDA approved, but these are all applications, and that will be an edge for a company like Apple if they come up with a decent EMR. They can use all of their other gadgets, they're like little soldiers in people's pockets, like their phones and watches and AirPods and all that, to provide, to link to the EMR with patient consent, of course, and provide information. So you can have almost constant monitoring of the patient's health status. That's huge. That can sell during a recession. And its adoption can have a, po a, a positive business impact on the bottom line, on profit, for health systems and hospitals in the U.S., maybe pharmacies too, maybe perhaps different kinds of healthcare organizations in the U.S. That can sell. That can be a win-win for everyone. It's a win for the tech company, be it Apple or Google or whoever. A win for the patient. A win for the clinician. A win for the, for the health systems, for the hospitals. Do you see how big this is? If tech companies have something big in the works in terms of health tech, this is or should be a priority of spending, of budgeting uh, in their budgets 
even during this recession, this current or upcoming recession, depending on how you look at it. And that was where I think money should be spent. If they're not already doing that, that's where I think they should be spending their money for the reasons I mentioned. Health tech is huge. AI is huge. Quantum is probably potentially, potentially really big. But it doesn't seem to be immediate. AI is now. Health tech is definitely now. The priorities of spending of big tech companies should be health tech and AI either equally or I dare say maybe even health tech a bit more than AI or equally, okay? But however you want it. Quantum, sure, maybe not the number one priority for this phase. Maybe it can take a backseat for a bit. Yeah, I think that's fair. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Where do you think tech companies are going to focus their spending? How do you think they should handle the next year and a half to two years? Of course, we've all seen how they've been laying off thousands of people. It's been like catastrophic, really, for the poor folks who got laid off. I really wish them the best. But um, yeah, I mean, it's been a nasty, nasty impact on their industry. Uh, and they're clearly cutting the fat in all ways possible. How do you think they're going to do in the next year and a half to two years in a very likely recession if we're not already in it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.